Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Another talk coming up. If Srila Prabhupada, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Sri Radha Krishna, so permit me. There's another talk coming up on Radha, Radha Kata. Just a reminder of the obvious things before I start talking on, on these topics, which are very elevated topics, the most elevated topics, or getting toward the most elevated topics. We all need to stick to the basics. Chanting minimum 16 rounds every day, following the four regulated principles, rising early, studying Srila Prabhupada's books. These are the basics. We can imagine we're flying so high in the sky, but we have to keep our feet on the ground, so to speak, keep a solid basis. And that comes by chanting, trying to chant very attentively, uh, remembering that we've, we've fallen in this material world we're simply praying for the mercy of Krishna, which has come to us in the form of instructions from the Vaishnava Parampara, which we are receiving through Srila Prabhupada, and the, the basic activities that we need to stick to in order to make steady progress in Krishna consciousness. Now, we may ask, why am I talking all these big, big, high things when uh, so many practical things need doing in the world for the sake of spreading Krishna consciousness? There are so many problems in the world. It's uh, The problems in the world didn't begin with the pandemic that's presently going on. Pandemic or no pandemic, we're in a very, very difficult position. And e even if we're in an apparently very nice position, we're all in the position of birth, death, old age, and disease. The real important thing is to practice Krishna consciousness seriously, preach it to others at the basic level, ask them to chant Hare Krishna. So why are we talking all these big high things? That, was, that you could say, is very much Srila Prabhupada's mood. He didn't concentrate on very, what we may say, high topics. Uh, but he always preached Bhagavad Gita as it is to the public and mostly to the devotees also and the topics of Srimad Bhagavatam, focusing on the basics. And we should also do that. But of course, Srila Prabhupada also did give us Krishna book. He gave us Chaitanya Charitamrita. He gave us Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu with insights into these very high topics. And he personally relished hearing the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan and outside Vrindavan, and he wanted that we should also come to the stage of doing that also without neglecting the basics. So these topics are not to be eschewed, but at the same time, we have to keep in contact with the, with the basics. In the last talk I gave, on this topic, on Bhakti Nod Thakur's appearance day. Um, from Bhakti Nod Thakur's own songs. Insights into his personal relationship with and feelings and love for Radha. Just as everyone has an intimate relationship with Krishna, an individual unique relationship also, uh, everyone who is fortunate enough to come within that circle has a unique individual relationship with Radha. Everyone who is fortunate enough to come within that circle means by invitation only, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invites everyone. It's not that everyone has the opportunity, if, if one is fortunate enough to be born, in a time and a place where the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is being propagated, then one has the opportunity to enter into Radha's circle. Uh, or even if not directly entering within the circle, to do some service there. Uh, for instance, one can become a, a 
pigeon or a saras crane in Vrindavan or a parrot in Vrindavan. So that's also pleasing to Radha and Krishna. That becomes part of the, uh, by making the sounds, the beautiful sounds of the, of the kokil bird in Vrindavan that also pleases Radha and Krishna. That becomes an udipana, a stimulus for their pleasure and, and for, for remembering them. So, individual personal relationship with Krishna and with Radha also. And Krishna also, as Srila Prabhupada often said, he doesn't only love the gopis, he loves the cows. And Radha does too. After all, she's a gopi. Gopi means a cow herding woman. Not, not that she personally goes out to herd the cows, but in that caste, the cow keeping caste, they all know how all the, all the things about cows, how to handle them, how to milk them, how to help deliver them in birth, and so many things. So we have Bhaktivinoda's Radha, and he's giving us the idea how we can all have our own individual relationship with Radha. Now, going back to a point I made previously, I said, there's no philosophy in Vrindavan. It's the land of love beyond philosophy. But then I also said that Jiva Goswami, he was in Vrindavan and he was writing so much philosophy. And actually, various uh, people with various misconceptions used to, and up to the present day, they criticize Jiva Goswami for that. But he wasn't preaching to the Vrijbasis about how they should understand that there is Bhagawan, Krishna is Bhagawan, how the Krishna's love is to be understood through Srimad Bhagavatam in a very philosophical way. He wasn't discuss he didn't write all these things for the uh Vrijbasis so much not not for those devotees who already in their loving relationship with Krishna but for others so that they could make their progress on that path toward Vrindavan. He was living in Vrindavan and serving Vrindavan in this way. Serving Vrindavan means serving the pastimes of Vrindavan, which means Krishna and Radha and all the eternally liberated devotees uh, in Vrindavan. And he was also serving them by giving a a uh, philosophical basis to uphold the uh, love pastimes of Radha and Krishna as delineated by uh, Srila Rupa Goswami and other of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. So it wasn't some kind of materialistic philosophy. It's, there's no philosophy in Vrindavan in the sense that you won't find Nanda Maharaj sitting around talking with the while well, they're herding the cows discussing Vedanta philosophy or any such thing. <clears throat> uh, but others write philosophy about them to help us understand and to become inspired to, to join them and to understand that the ultimate limit of all Vedanta is to serve Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan. So those who approach through that path, through the Vedic path, they they can come to the pastimes of Ratha and Krishna if they're very, very fortunate. But it wasn't mundane. It, it normally writing and discussing about philosophy is either mundane if it doesn't come to Krishna or or, or, or it's simply mental speculation on, on the simply uh, on the mental platform, or it's spiritual if it comes at least up to the level of Brahman, uh, Brahma Anusandhan, seeking after Brahma, Atato Brahma Jignasa, or it's devotional as uh, if it comes up to Vaikuntha, Ayodhya, Dwaraka, Mathura, that's devotional, that's spiritual. We can't say it's not, not spiritual. Mm. 
But Vrindavan, yeah, there's there's no philosophy as such, but the dealings between the bridge buses, even the ordinary dealings, were, were just like when Nanda Maharaj is uh, at home, your shoulders at home. In the evening, they'll they'll have some entertainers, like some acrobats doing performances, and all the bridge bridge buses come in the home and see, and Krishna sees, and they enjoy that. And it looks like some mundane entertainment, but it's not, because it's in relationship with Krishna. And there'll be village gossip also. Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? But because everything is saturated with love for Krishna, then that's not mundane, even the apparently ordinary activities. Oh, a new calf got, did you see a new calf got born there? That might sound like totally mundane. Suddenly it doesn't sound like Vedanta topics, but it's totally spiritual. Sanatan Goswami, a gopi from the spiritual world. Tyaktva Turnam Asesha Mandala Patishraning Sada Tuchavant, who was in the highest governmental position in the one of the most powerful and opulent kingdoms in the world at that time, gave that all up. Uh, what for? Bhuktva Dina Ganesh Ku Karunaya Kopina Kanta Shrito. He gave all that up to live very simply and humbly, living as a mendicant in Vrindavan. Gopi Bhava Rasamrita Dilahari Kalola Magno Mahur. When the Rupa Sanatana Raguja Goshi Jiva Gopala go to to dive and surface in the waves of the transcendental loving feelings of the gopis for Krishna. So Sanatana Goswami, absolutely spiritual platform. Even if we say from the external point of view, he was uh, judging from the external point of view, he was a highly exalted spiritualist. He gave up everything materially and led a very detached life for the sake of spiritual pursuit. But over and above that, he's a completely perfect devotee of the Supreme Lord. Uh, but he would walk around, travel around in different parts of Raja Mandala. And he would speak with the local people. If there, were, if, if there were disputes among them, he would listen to their different grievances and, and help patch it up. And the, the local people, they loved him. Even the ordinary talks, Raghunath Das Goswami, he says that even the ordinary talks the apparently materialistic talks of the people in Vrindavan, that is more spiritual than the philosophical talks relating to transcendence anywhere else. So Vrindavan, everything is completely spiritual and perfect. So what Jiva Goswami did in his philosophical uh, <clears throat> treatises was presented these topics in such a way that we, who are addicted to the external point, external perspective, can begin to enter into that. But what was what was he doing? Why was he doing that? Jayo jayo jvala rasa sarva rasa sa parakya bhave jaha brajate pracha, brajate pracha. He was glorifying the topmost resplendent rasa the, of parakya bhav. You say no, no, he wasn't. He said they got married. Uh, but no, ultimately everything he did was to uphold the teachings of his guru, Rupa Goswami. Uh, and this is to be preached from Vrindavan. So that's what he did. He was preaching by his writing. <clears throat> but carefully. These topics of Vrindavan, especially when we come to the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna, that's we preach very carefully because it, it's highly liable to be misunderstood because it's Krishna's sangsara vasana. Remember, I've been repeating that term several times. Kangsara api sangsara vasana badha shrinkala. The enemy of Kangsa, even though he's such a great, powerful personality, the supreme personality of Godhead, is bound by the chains of deep-rooted desires for enjoyment. So this sangsara vasana 
everyone in the material world is tied up by that. And people who are on the path of spiritual realization, they can understand that this is the chain in the material world. This is what binds us in this material world. And they see others who are still bound by that as being in a very low and miserable condition, which is a fact. But then they misunderstand Krishna to be in that situation also, and then they become blasphemous. So it's best not to discuss this these topics of Krishna's samsara vasana, his apparently worldly activities, with people who won't understand it. Maybe materialistic people will be attracted to it more uh, and, and not become blasphemous. Srila Prabhupada, in introducing his Krishna book to the public in his introduction, he writes that, or the preface, he writes that um, people like to hear stories of love stories and uh, adventure stories so they can hear about Krishna. So even in such a situation, if they hear about Krishna, they may think, well, it's a nice story. That's a very rudimentary beginning in appreciating Krishna. But if one thinks that, oh, I'm above all this material attachment, chasing after women and all that kind of thing, if one thinks like that, and is presented, here is Krishna. He's the Supreme Lord. He's the speaker of Bhagavad Gita, and he's tied up by material desires. Then we may become blasphemous or lose any faith in it. So it, it's very uh, carefully we have to present this. And again, uh, it might be that even devotees of Narayana who are attached to the Lord in Vaikuntha or, or those who are attached to the Lord as Rama, they may see that Krishna, there seems to be something not quite right there. Uh, but the very charm of Vrindavan is that it's actually on a higher level than Vaikuntha, Dwarka, Vaikuntha, Ayodhya, Dwarka, Mathura, as I've said several times in these talks. We shouldn't think that, oh, Vaikuntha, that's just all useless and rubbish. And Raghunath Das Goswami can say like that. We shouldn't even start to think like that. We should be most respectful to the devotees of Vaikuntha, of Vaikuntha Nath. Uh, remember that we ourselves are in the material world. We're in, the, we're in or just by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas being lifted up from the materialistic sangsar of our sana, material desires that bind us in this material world. Uh, those who are worshipping Narayana, they are on the most exalted platform. Those who are worshippers of the Lord and his pastimes in Ayodhya, Dwaraka, Mathura, they are worshipable for us. Do we not also relish hearing the pastimes of Lord Rama and all the different avatars? Do we think that's just some, some nonsense for us to reject? Of course not. That, that would be most foolish to say like that or to think that uh, we're already on the platform where we're so much attached to Krishna that we can look down on some, but actually even Raghunath Das, not exactly that he looks down on this, it's just that he has such tremendous attachment for the service of Radha and Krishna, that for him, the thought of going to Vaikuntha is painful because Radha and Krishna aren't there exactly. They are there as Lakshmi Narayana, but it's a different mood. So from that exalted platform, we may look down at Vaikuntha, but we're, we're not looking down, we're still trying to look up toward Vaikuntha. So we should be very, very careful. Again, that's what I'm saying. We can, it's very easy for materialists to misunderstand these topics, or even for greatly exalted philosophers and spiritualists to misunderstand these topics. And even for 
uh, devotees of the Supreme Lord in Vaikuntha and Ayodhya, and even devotees of the Supreme Lord in Dwaraka and Mathura, it's very easy for them to misunderstand the topics of Radha and Krishna. And even Mother Yashoda does for that matter, being overwhelmed by yoga maya. <laughs> Uh, it's because she doesn't have entrance into her understanding of the Madhurya Leela of Radha and Krishna because that would disturb her mood as a parental mood toward Krishna. So what do we think? We're more advanced than Mother Yashoda? That's complete nonsense if we even start to think like that. So don't misunderstand, and don't, don't present it in a way that others can misunderstand, although that danger is also there. And misunderstanding is required for that past, for those past times. Just like I said, Mother Yashoda, she also misunderstands Radha and Krishna's love. Actually, they... they, they Yashoda and Nanda, they wanted that they thought, oh, that'd be very nice if our boy can marry Radha. But as it happened, it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, but they have didn't have actually. They were talking about the marriage of Radha and Krishna. Well, it didn't happen because Yoga Maya organized it differently. Otherwise, there would have been no none of this paraki abhav. But Apart from Jiva Goswami's description that eventually Radha and Krishna get married when Krishna, Krishna gets married to all the gopis when he comes back from Dwarka, there is a description also in Garga Sanghita that when Radha and Krishna were just infants, that Brahma arranged for the, to take them away from their parents and brought them into a, a, a grove of Vrindavan where none of the Rajavasis were there, only Radha and Krishna, all the demigods came and all of a sudden Radha and Krishna manifested themselves in the Kisha form, in this, uh, the, the useful forms, and Brahma married them and then sent them back in their infant forms. So that's there in Gaga Sanghita. So the demigods were very satisfied to do that. So there are so many pastimes of Radha and Krishna, but the, the whole paraki of Bhav which makes their pastime so sweet and so special and so secret. The special gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to understand that is in the mood or the understanding that they are not married. Who will understand all these things? Misunderstanding is a requirement. If one thinks that in Vrindavan, if one thinks that Krishna is God, then he's not in Vrindavan. <laughs> I'm talking about the eternally liberated devotees there. Uh, even in Vrindavan up to the present day, the, the devotees, they don't cultivate that mood such so much the, of him being the Supreme Lord as being a family member or one of us. <clears throat> so that misunder... It's a misunderstanding. Yes, it's a misunderstanding. Who's to say? What's, what's true? Is it that Krishna is the lover of Radha? Is that more true than he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead? They're both irrevocable facts about him. Facts, facts, facts. That's science. We're in the scientific age. We're interested in facts. What are the facts? Is it true that Krishna is God? Facts, yeah, it's a fact. It's right there in the Gita. Vaidaisya Sarva Araham Veva Vedaha. All the Vedas, the internal, imperishable treatises of knowledge, they all point toward Krishna as being supreme. Yes, it's a fact. It's a fact in all times, in all places, and all circumstances. But there's an exception, and it's Vrindavan. And he is God, he doesn't stop being God. Who's to understand all these things? It's, it's, Atintya, turn, stop trying to understand everything and just dive into it. Uh, that's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu calls us to do. Of course, it's not such a cheap thing. Krishna is God and by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, he is eas easily available difficult to find through the regular Vedic process and not difficult to attain. 
by the mercy of his devotees. So Krishna is very kind, he's very merciful, he's made himself available, but he's not cheap. Not cheap. Sangsara vasana. When we are free from sangsara vasana, then really we can start to understand. Understand, is that the right word? <laughs> Enter into experience, join in Krishna, sangsara, his, his activities of desire, because Krishna's desire is love. Our desire is for material enjoyment. We can enter into those activities. And just, it's, it's so difficult to understand because we see the sangsara of asana of this material world binds us in pain. And we see the sangsara of asana of the spiritual world, of Krishna. He also appears to be in pain. Appears like that, but that's all the fun. We can say it like that. The fun, the pastimes. Krishna is in pain. What is Krishna's pain? Krishna's pain is when he cannot be with Radha. And then what are the devotees doing? Well, their whole objective is to bring him, to, to bring the two together. Dohara Melane Ananda Kari. Dohara Bijoge, uh, what is that? Bijoge Mori. Hmm. The Mathira Thakur says, when Radha and Krishna, when they come together, then that is my happiness. Dohara Bijoge, Dukete Mori. And then I feel, feel just like dying when they're separated. So the whole pastimes of Radha and Krishna is just to bring them together. And Krishna's pain, it's Krishna's pain. How can Krishna have pain? Yes, he has pain. His feeling of separation from Radha. And there's so many uh, beautiful narrations in this regard. Just one of them I'll relate as I have heard it, that once Krishna in the midday, he's out in the forest herding his cows with the cowherd boys, enjoying so many wonderful sports, playing hide and seek and playing on their flutes, imitating the movements of the birds and the frogs and having so many boyish pastimes. All of a sudden Krishna was overwhelmed with intense feelings of separation from Radha. He called to Subal, who is his, among all the cowherd boys, Subal is, is the most exalted. If, if, if we want to study Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Subal, he can, even uh, up to the highest level, Mahabhav, he can enter into that. So Krishna tells Subal, you've got to do something, you've got to do something. Somehow I have to meet Radha now. I'm dying without her. And Subal said, well, how, how in the, in the midday, in the front, in the open, in front of everyone, how can it be done? And Krishna said, I don't know, but somehow you have to do it. So Subal, they just happened to be uh, in the forest, not so far from where Radha was. So that magnetism that was, Krishna was coming within the magnetism of Radha. I knew I'm close. How can I be so close and not be with her? So Subal, he, he went through the forest paths and came to the house. The house of Radha means the house of her in-laws. It's, it's her prison. Her home is her prison where she's always trying to escape from to meet Krishna. And uh, there's special guards all the time knowing full well that that's what she wants to do and trying to stop her doing that. So Subal had to think of something to do. So he entered and immediately the relatives of Radha said, well, what are you doing here? He was a known person, he was known to the family. After all in Vrindavan it's a village and everyone is known to everyone else, even if 
it's a village still there are millions and billions and trillions of gopis but still there's that village atmosphere that's another of the magnificent inconceivable arrangements of krishna's yoga maya potency so he said well we're herding cows close by we're herding the calves they were young at that time one one of the calves ran away and i thought i saw it come so so i said oh you look and see you look around and see if there's your calf then you take they trusted him <laughs> then uh, on the pretense of looking <clears throat> Subal met with some of these servants of Radha, some of the young maidservant assistants, and told them the situation. Then they hatched a plot. Uh, because Subal, uh, bright countenance, about the same height as Radha. So they, they swapped clothes. And Subal became Radha, and Radha became Subal. And then uh, the so-called Subal took one calf and walked out and said, thank you, I got the calf, but there, now it's Radha. So Subal had told Radha which path you have to follow. You go like this, this, you'll find Krishna. He's just lying down, collapsed, just somehow hoping waiting for you to come so you go and then in this in this way radha escaped in the dress of subal and came holding the calf so he could not be seen disguised as subal and could not be seen that she had protruding breasts that she's actually a female so by the arrangement of maya she was able to talk in a voice like Subala and look like him, even to Krishna. So he, Subal came and Krishna saw and said, Oh, you couldn't bring Radha? Uh, and Radha in the dress of Subal said, No, I, I, I just couldn't do it. It's just impossible. I was, uh, couldn't manage it. And Krishna said, as if he was going to die, he groaned. And what will I do now? How can I live? And Radha, in the dress of Subal, said, uh, Well, if you like, I can, I can easily bring Chandravali. It's a test. And Krishna said, Oh, what are you talking about? It's just like if I need milk and you bring... You bring yogurt, what is the use? I, I need the real thing, you want to bring some counterfeit. In this way, Radha was very satisfied. Put down the calf and embraced Krishna and said, you couldn't did you not recognize me? So this is a very, very nice story, how the pain of Krishna, that any time he can have that pain, even at the highest level of, of Radha Krishna pastimes, they can be embracing and experiencing the bliss of being with each other and at the same time feeling separation from each other. How is it possible? Don't ask me. Don't ask anyone. Uh, but they're just feeling the fear. I could be separated. Am I really embracing or is it just a dream? Because in the, when they're separate, then there's so much thinking of being with each other that it can be just as if they are with each other, so that when they are together, then again they feel, well, maybe it's not really real, and then again they feel separation. These are all topics far beyond any philosophy or understanding, and even if we can talk these topics, who are we to talk? Somehow we've had the opportunity to do so. So what does, what will the philosopher say about this? If we say Krishna is in pain, how can we say Krishna is in pain? How can, how can you say he's not in pain? He is, but how, if God, he's not in pain. So then we come back to that Buddhist thing again. You can't say he's in pain. You can't say he's not in pain. He's really in pain. And how in God, he's ananda maya bhayasat. He's full of bliss. 
how can it be pain? You can't say he's in pain, but you can't say he's not in pain. If you t if Subal says Krishna, after all, you're the supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, you, you can't be in pain. Every everything comes from you. Yasyai kanishva sita kalam atava lamve jivanti loma villajajagarandanata. You are, don't you remember? You're the one from whom all the universes emanate. You can't be in pain. Is Subal going to say this to Krishna? No way. <laughs> he he doesn't even think about such things. He doesn't even know such things. He has to do something. He has to do something to relieve Krishna of his pain. This is achinta. This is beyond philosophy. It's it's not a misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding to think that God cannot have pain. It's a misunderstanding to think he can have pain. It's a misunderstanding to say that he cannot have pain. Don't say he's not in pain. No, it's just his pastimes. It's all bliss. When you're there, it's pain. Krishna feels the pain. It is all bliss. But don't say to him that it's all bliss because he doesn't feel it like that. Again, who is to understand this? When we get to this point, there's nothing higher. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So shall we stop there? We came to the highest point, highest point possible. And we'll stop there. We didn't, did we come anywhere? Or are we still in the gutter looking up? Well, we're in the gutter, so we're looking up. We're in the gutter of material desires. Philosophically, we came to the highest point. Philosophically, highest point means left philosophy behind. But here we are in the material world, looking at it, wondering what's going on. What's going on? What is going on? There's going to be a war, China, America. There's a virus sweeping the world. I've got a pain in my stomach. What's going on? What's going on? What the? What does it matter? Krishna wants to be with Radha. That's what's going on. There's no higher understanding than this. Well, as soon as we say there's no higher understanding, we can look out for a more higher understanding. So maybe we can discuss that next time. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Everything is in Krishna's hands. Who are we to discuss? Where's the realization? That we may say. Should we speak on these subjects? Yes, we should speak. Should we speak on these subjects? No, we shouldn't speak. Yes, we should speak because someone should speak these subtopics. Should we speak? No, because we're not qualified. So where do we go? Where do we go with all of this? It's a great quandary. I'll discuss that more later. Krishna willing, all glories to the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is feeling pain in the bushes of Vrindavan. Oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Parivada to Jano Yata Tata Va Nanu Mokarona Vayam Vicharyamana Hari Rasama Dirama Dati Matabhu Vivilu Tama Nar Tama Nir Vishama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare